everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Darlene Casper of Stephenville, Texas. You might have recognized her and, of course, her celebrity standing next to her, Top Tally, setting some amazing runs on TV. I've got to know Darlene. She's very approachable, very nice lady. Uh, let's get to know her a little bit. Darlene grew up all around horses like most of us did. She grew up raising cows and chasing goats and sheep and she really didn't take barrel racing. She rail raced a little bit on the side, but she team rope mainly. She went to San Angelo State University and finished her degree at San Antonio, San Antonio College. Um, top tally came along and she just went along from there. Two-time NFR qualifier. She was also the reserve champion uh, Oklahoma City BFA World Futurity and Derby. Uh, she won the Speed Horse Derby. Uh, she's won the Omaha Pace Picani Tour Finale. She's won the Texas Circuit Finals, been a six-time Texas Circuit Finals qualifier. Um, she told me her most proudest moment is when Tally won the AQHA Horse of the Year, and he also was reserve, right, this mm -hmm. year? Mm -hmm. right. And so um, we're just glad to have him here. Thank you, Darlene, for coming on. Thank you. Darlene's here with us today. She's going to share some of her wonderful knowledge that she's accumulated over the years. She's going to talk about what breed and what type of horse she likes. She's going to talk about not necessarily she believes that barrel racing is an individual sport. She believes it's a team sport. And she's going to talk about some bits she uses and products. Also some training and exercises that has helped her become a champion. And she's also going to share with us some issues she's had with Tally here and how she's had to go through several different things, trial and error, in order to get where she can uh, make that winning run on him. So let's get started. Darlene, you told me before that, you know, barrel racing, we, we think of it as an individual sport. But you told me when we were talking earlier, you really firmly believe that barrel racing is a team sport. Tell me what you mean by that. Uh, First of all, you just get to be the lucky one that's the jockey. Uh, you have to have a farrier, a chiropractor, and uh, a vet that you trust mm -hmm. and that they have to know what they can work with. They have to be able to work together. Uh, I know that when I have gone to the vet and the chiropractor and the farrier were all there at one time. I've spent as much as six hours there taking shoes on, taking shoes off, adjusting them, you know, the vet doesn't like it, the chiropractor likes it, the farrier just wants to get it over with, you know, not really, because Lance has been shoeing my horse for, uh, I guess about three years now, and uh, I intend to marry him, but I wouldn't suggest everybody marry their shoer, <laughs> but uh, if he was not the best man for the job, he would not be shoeing Tally, but he is meticulous, and they've got to pay attention to detail, and you've got to have confidence in them. Now, it's your call, and you should not be intimidated by any of them. I mean, you know, sometimes when all three of them get together, I have to remind them that I'm the one paying the bill and I'm the one riding the horse, you know, because that, that's part of it. You need to have either your spouse or your better half, whatever, needs to be supportive. If they're only in it for the lip service, it will never, ever work. So either get rid of them or <laughs> get another one. <laughs> <laughs> Trade them in. Trade them now, in. Now, um, you have some different things that you would like to show. Do you want? Do we want to go with the soreness first, checking for soreness? Uh, or do you want to talk just about do the a, stretching? You know, a quick rundown. on Because usually what I'll do is check him for soreness uh, before I take him to a barrel race, and then I'll put like my magnetic blanket on with all mm -hmm. my leg gear and uh, try to make adjustments accordingly. Mm -hmm. But what I'll do, and, I'll, and this is just rough because I don't even assume to know where all the acupuncture points are. I just know how to tell when, when my horse is sore. So I can show just some of the things that work for me. Uh, you'll just have to try them as to whether or not they work uh, for you. Uh, there are acupuncture points here. They, that come down through the shoulder and beside the backbone. And I'm not sure exactly where they are back here, but I know that if they react back here, 
see he's not sore, but he hadn't been doing anything either. So uh, he's okay back here. But and you're using, what are you using? Some sort of, is it's, it the needle? Yeah, it's a needle cap. Needle cap, okay. That's all it is. And anything like this, you know, will work. Okay. Uh, one thing that you can always do when uh, you unload your horse, and you can even do this without unloading them. Just leave them in the trailer and do this if, if you have trouble doing it while they're tied or don't have anybody to hold them. But they will pop their back if you run this down to their tail head. And some of them won't, and you'll have to do it down the center line under the stomach, and they will bow up. Let me see if I can get Tally to do it. Hold him and don't let him walk forward. Okay. Now, see, he's going to make a liar out of me. <laughs> Get up even. Cool. Got him. So if you'll do that and pop it, and sometimes you can actually hear it. And when you do that, you know that you line something up. This horse, when I got her, was started on calves. She had not been started on barrels. I've had her about 30 days, and I've only had her away from the house uh, three or four times, not much. And, you know, she's paying pretty good attention. She's not really looking at everything, but she may be when I take her to the barrel pattern, but we'll see. But I take them to the round pin first. I'll trot her and lope her both directions. And uh, some people don't like a tired horse. Frankly, I like a tired young horse. I think they pay attention better. I think you can put the fire to them later. But I want her to listen and I find that they listen better if, if they're a little tireder. Uh, some people are a little more cowboy and can get her done, but I like to do it the easy way. So that's what I'm into, and the way that won't get you hurt. Uh, getting hurt doesn't help anybody, and if you have a fresh horse, even if it's an older horse, put them in the round pen. Uh, this week I went to a guy's house, a team roper that lives down the road, and got him to help me with a horse that uh, I had taken to try that I suspected wasn't broke, and I suspected right, and so I saw him work him in the round pen and uh, teach him a lot that he actually did not know. So again, find somebody that knows more than you do, and if you don't want to, you know, go through all that, find a horse that knows more than you do. You know, the best thing I ever did when my daughter was little was buy her a horse that knew it and she didn't, but that horse taught her and took good care of her. It's the best insurance you can ever buy for a kid. She's paying pretty good attention. I really like this mare, and for me, that's a biggie, because I called a friend and told her that I actually bought a mare and she fainted and didn't even answer on the other line. So anyway, we'll see. Like, this is the first one that I've really gone and gotten by myself, so we'll see what happens with her. <clears throat> okay, I've got her paying attention, and uh, she's trotting along here, and if, if Speedy would quit nickering down there, we'd probably be a little bit better, but it doesn't seem to bother too much. And what I do is, at home, uh, I usually don't take her to the barrel pattern. I usually go ahead and lope and trot both directions. Uh, before I get to the pattern, because when I get to the pattern, I want her paying attention. And then take them at a lope. And if you feel like you need to stop her and they're not going to the, to the right spot, well. And I just recently put a tie down on her, if you can do without a tie down, but she tends to want to root a little bit. And I felt like she was dropping her shoulder more than I wanted. She's in the wrong lead. Oh, now see, she, she thought I was telling her something. And uh, I know that a lot of people are really concerned about whether or not they're in the right lead. And uh, personally, I think that if they're smart, they'll figure it out. 